<laughs> I think the idea for fatalities just came from the desire to rub it in someone's face, to just finish that person. We always liked the idea of letting the player, you know, get a free hit on somebody. The fatality plays an importance because it's a way to really put like a, an exclamation point on the end of a fight. It's a sort of an arcade mentality, you know, when everybody's competing against each other, you know, and everybody's watching, you know, you want to be able to just jab that guy, you know, a little bit more. And if you were able to do a fatality, it was something that made you cool, you know, how did you do it? And you can kind of either keep it a secret or, you know, give, uh, share the information. It was a major enticement. I think as time went on, it became an expected part of a Mortal Kombat game that you couldn't conceivably put out a Mortal Kombat game without having fatalities in it. Some of the ideas for fatalities in Mortal Kombat 1 came from pop culture, you know, from some movies that we had seen, uh, comic books or whatever, just, you know, things that really struck us as being violent. For Mortal Kombat 1, probably my favorite fatality was the one that was the most controversial, which is the, uh, the spine rip from Sub-Zero. You know, that was the one that usually got the most attention, the most oohs and ahs in the arcades. We wanted to do a sort of a fatality, sort of a move, but that wasn't really a fatality. When we came up with the idea of the pit and knocking somebody down into the spikes below, we really wanted to make sure that we had a fatality in the game that anybody could do. It actually wasn't played up like a regular fatality because it didn't have the whole choreography. It was just all of a sudden you were punched off the, off the bridge and you fell and died. With Mortal Kombat 2, we wanted to do everything bigger and better. And with, also with that game, we realized that fatalities had such a big impact into people's reaction to the game. With Mortal Kombat 1, it was something that we threw in there. We said, okay, maybe people are going to like it. Let's see. With Mortal Kombat 2, we knew that was a showcase feature for these games. We had a second fatality to give the game some legs. I mean, there wasn't just one fatality you had to learn. Now you had to learn two. I think it was all about being, you know, bigger and badder and better. And we really wanted to kind of push the envelope again, kind of do something that was very, um, you know, over the top in terms of uh, just the, the, the shock value. Flawless victory. My favorite fatality from MK2 was Katana's kiss and inflate fatality. We really started, you know, introducing levels of humor into the game. It wasn't so dark and so when Katana kissed the guy and then he inflated and then exploded, you know, it was outrageous, it was violent, but at the same time there was there was humor in it. I liked always kind of combining the two. It's kind of like, you know, you know, dark comedy. My most memorable fatality from Mortal Kombat 2 would probably be Liu Kang turning into the dragon and biting the guy. Uh, I worked on that particular one and it kind of stands out because it's so big. You know, the dragon, you don't expect, you know, a character, he's the only character that turns into anything, I think, in Mortal Kombat 2. I think Kung Lao's, because Kung Lao has always been one of my favorite characters. He kind of has this uh, Clint Eastwood, the brow thing going on and uh, the blade on the hat and it was just as kids gruesome is the you know taking a hand and uh, split down the middle you know and the, and the body does the whole blah, blah, blah. I guess I remember the scorpion one where he demasks and then you see his skull and then he burns you up with a flame with flames out of his mouth this is the only um, remaining artifact of the infamous uh, plastic skeleton model basically so we have to take a model like this like the skeleton arm and we move it up and put like a piece of clay in here, take a picture, move it up, put a piece of clay, take a picture, and do this. So it's essentially you'd have this motion. So all of a sudden, then we put that in the computer and that would uh, go ahead and like paint fire on it. If you ever were caught on fire, this is the natural motion you would probably do. victory. We had to add more stage fatalities to Mortal Kombat 2 to up, you know, the ante on, you know, from Mortal Kombat 1. 
The Pit was a huge success in Mortal Kombat 1, so we wanted to kind of come up with like a pseudo 3D version of it. We had a pit, you knock the guy down the pit, but this time the camera angle was from the top, and the guy is falling, so he's stationary, but the background scales up, so it looks like it's getting closer. So that was really, it was cool. So the guy would go and smack, you know, hit the, hit the ground. I think the idea of friendships came from the reaction to all the attention that Mortal Kombat 1 was getting with its fatalities. And so it was kind of like our way of making fun of that, all the attention that that game got because of the fatalities. And so the thought was, well, we can be nice too and put in these friendships instead. So instead of ripping someone's heart out, you can give them a cake. My favorite friendship move is probably uh, Liu Kang's disco dance one. That's probably the, the silliest one. It's just so completely out of character. The friendship that sticks out in my mind is the one where Jax has the paper dolls and you know stretches them out. That's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> My recollection of Babalities is I remember Dan Forden, who's the audio guy, he came up to me and he said, you know, hey, how about we do something called a Babality where you turn your opponent into a baby. And I'm not sure what that was about, but I was probably, I think it was from searching through sound effect CDs for stuff for the game and I came across some babies crying or something. And I don't know, I just sort of popped in my head. It's like, well, what if like you turned them into a baby and then they would cry or something. And so now it's like, you know, why, why would you do that? And he was just like, no, I just think it'd be funny. And, um, you know, that was pretty much good enough for me. So, you know, all it required was for us to make, you know, 12 little baby images. One of the improvements to uh, Mortal Kombat 3 over Mortal Kombat 2 was the addition of using 3D graphics to come up with some of the backgrounds. A lot of the effects, you know, from little blood explosions. They weren't so much done by hand anymore. They're actually done in 3D. MK3, we took the same approach to making that game as we did with Mortal Kombat 2, where basically it's more, bigger, better. Uh, some of my favorites from MK3 are probably uh, Sindel's when she screams your skin off. She's a very loud voice. Reptile, where he does the, he kind of pukes acid on the opponent and you see him kind of, the acid eat away at the other guy. Sector had one of my favorite fatalities in Mortal Kombat 3. His chest doors would open up, his huge mechanical device would open up, squish him, and go right back into his chest. I thought it was funny because there was no way that size of a squisher could come out of his chest, but yet it did. Also there was one where Jax kind of grew into this giant and then you kind of stepped on the other guy. Again, that was a little bit more towards the humorous side, but it was something kind of Outrageous, nonetheless. Liu Kang wins. Animality. Animalities, I believe, were created by the fans. They wanted to see different modes. They wanted to see nudalities, which we, of course, we couldn't do. And one of the rumors that wasn't true was this feature called an animality. That someone put out there, oh, you can turn Scorpion into an animal, and um, which wasn't true. But then we decided to make it true in MK3. The reason some of these realities weren't done past Mortal Kombat 3 is because it's difficult to get things to transform in a, in a 3D environment. I mean, I suppose you could do it with a puff of smoke that covers the change, but to morph, you know, one completely different model into another completely different model, you know, is a little difficult to do. It was definitely different doing fatalities in MK4 as opposed to the previous games because it was, everything was in 3D. Definitely I think the biggest thing was the ability to sever limbs and um, we were never able to really do that before and so when you were able to blow people up and, um, and just you know tear them literally limb from limb uh, that opened up a lot of creative input for more things that we could do. Now we can move the camera around. We did a lot of funny, st like, kind of like, maybe three camera cuts of the same, like, you know, explosion or something like that. Like, big things like, you know, we'll have the body blow up, and have the camera cut around it, then like the last camera cut, you see the, the head rotating and hit the camera and fall. Well, the biggest limitation on the animation in the 2D games was that 
Every frame of animation was an entire separate image, so it was very memory intensive to have smooth animation. So with motion capture, we have this full fluid motion that wasn't available in a 2D game. Animation-wise, it actually becomes a little bit easier because you only have to capture the motion once and then you apply it to a 3D model as opposed to having every single character in the digitized world. You'd have to have every single character act out having every fatality done to them. One of my favorite fatalities in MK4 was reptiles. The one specifically where he actually jumps up on the victim and just starts gnawing at him. And he gets up, he pushes the victim down, the camera zooms up on the character's face and you just see a mutilated face. It was just really, really gruesome and uh, really effective. Next would probably be the Shinnok one where his hand, that skeleton hand would come up and, and drag you into hell. That was kind of cool too. I came in at the very end on doing fatalities. I did Reiko, so that's the one I remember the best. Not that it was a very spectacular fatality, but it was the very first Mortal Kombat fatality I ever programmed. I think the advantage for not having to deal with the arcade was that we had a, a fixed platform. I mean, granted, the console systems vary, but uh, not having to worry about the, the real big differences between uh, graphic chips and things that the uh, arcade systems have versus the consoles. The time that it takes to go from raw data to finished product is much shorter. You get to spend a lot more effort on the uh, creativity side of it. We just about tripled our polygon count. We expanded our texture size uh, tremendously. We expanded motion and a lot of the effects we could do. So it opened up a lot of doors to do wild fatalities. So with Deadly Alliance, suddenly we knew we were in the home. We didn't have to ask for 50 cents every two minutes. So we can really stage our fatalities and make them these big events. And that's why they started becoming a lot more elaborate. My favorite fatality in Deadly Alliance uh, has to be the uh, Sub-Zero pulling the, the whole uh, skeleton out of, the, out of his victim. That was the first fatality programming that I got to do. And um, it was a lot of fun uh, putting in the effects, the blood. The bones. <laughs> One of my favorites was Cyrax's where he had this uh, hydraulic arm that came out and grabbed the victim and just like slammed him up and down until he was a bloody pulp. That was good times. I think my favorite fatality from Deadly Alliance was Kung Lao's. It was, um, you know, it was, there was a little bit of humor but it was also kind of flashy stylish. You know, he threw his hat, it stuck into the guy's head and he fell down and then he would kind of stomp on the, uh, the opponent and the head would fly up and he would catch it and do this kind of fancy pose which was, you know, silly in some ways, fancy and uh, stylish in other ways, but it was um, probably one of the more elaborate fatalities from Deadly Alliance. For MK Deadly Alliance, we scaled back to only one fatality per character, basically due to time factors. We didn't have time to do two for every character. It just got to the point where at the end of the game we just couldn't get all the content in. So we ended up deciding on one fatality per character and that's how it ended up. Part of the reason we decided to go with two fatalities in Deception is we'd heard um, pretty clear from a lot of the fans that they, they wanted more. They really loved the fatalities in Dudley Alliance and they wanted us to expand and, and keep adding, so we decided to uh, go for two with each character. <laughs> Kira, one of the new characters, um, she just kind of does like, uh, she throws her knives at, at the victim's feet, uh, the guy gets stuck, and then she kind of does a little walk and then just rips the body in half and throws it out. Working with uh, like the animators, uh, especially uh, Carlos, who does the um, animation, it was kind of funny seeing like how he would be the guy who's doing the walking for the female character. One of the most disturbing fatalities is the Molina one. And then when she's done, she does this sexy sort of, you know, oh, that was awesome. And what the fans don't know is that, that was Carlos. Baracho takes a swig of some wine and then he takes a torch and lights the guy on fire. And then the other one is him basically, you know, uh, expelling gas or farting and then using the same torch, you know, and having the gas like ignite and then burn up the character. 
Well, the reason we added the, the Harikiri was to give the other opponent a chance, you know, just a little bit of a window to, to kind of um, turn the tables on the other guy that was performing the fatality. We thought it would be cool to make the, the fatality part of the game like a race. So it's basically who can do a fatality first. Probably one of my favorite Harry, Harry Curies is Ermax. It's just so gruesome. He, he gets down on his knees and basically just starts ramming his head into the floor. I think Kenshi, because it's the classical, you know, samurai Harry Carey one. And then uh, Nightwolf throwing up the axe, you know, impaled. Death traps is, are something that we've always wanted to have in the game ever since the beginnings. The whole idea is that while you're fighting, there's a chance that even if you're losing, you could have just one or two pixels of, of life left. You still have a chance to win the match. And so you're trying to maneuver your victim into the, the danger zone. Uh, it adds a lot of extra uh, strategy to the game. My favorite death trap in Deception was definitely the grinder. When you knocked your opponent in there, be these two huge grinders that would pin the victim, and it would be bad enough if, if the victim just went right through it, but instead the victim is trapped in there, and there's this little bit of tension where you feel his bones crushing almost, and then eventually he gets sucked through and blood is projected onto the wall behind him. My favorite death trap in Deception is the Hell's Foundry Smasher. The character gets kicked into a wall, lands on a hot slab of metal, his skin, his shoes and clothes should be on fire now. But yet he's trying to get back to safety on this hot metal and wham! Shujinko wins. The idea behind the creative fatality system is to really expand the fatality. Instead of just doing a really complicated button combo and sitting back and watching everything happen, we wanted to put uh, more options in the player's hands, let them show creativity by able to string different attacks. Every time you perform one, you have a little less time to perform the second one. So a really good player is going to get two or three part fatalities in there. And a great player is going to get like a seven or eight part fatality in there. And an amazing player is going to get, you know, a nine or ten part fatality in there. So it actually is a gameplay feature. We award currency in the game for it. So it's not only is it a great show, but it's a, an actually uh, a skill that you have to learn. We spent a lot of time thinking about the death traps in Armageddon. They're much more elaborate than the ones we've seen in Deception. My favorite stage fatality has got to be the classic falling through a floor and landing on spikes. And in Armageddon, we've updated it in the Bell Tower Arena. We have a four-pronged spike. When someone lands on it, each limb gets severed. We even have a rat that comes in and grabs one of the arms and num nums away with it. It's hard to pick my favorite death trap in Armageddon. There's a lot of good ones. The subway fatality because it's a it's a remake in 3D of a fatality that we had in Mortal Kombat 3, and it's a lot more of a cinematic presentation. Looks a lot lot more painful, and you know people remember it, but they don't remember seeing it how we're presenting it. Probably my favorite one right now is in. The wastelands. It's it's cool. It's a cool visual. A guy getting thrown into the catapult with the uh, burning burning balls, and all of a sudden, you know, he gets flung. So he's flying through the air on fire. Then he hits the wall. Then he slides down. So it's a. I like that. It, it worked out pretty well. I was happy with that. I think my all-time favorite. As classic as it is, uh, um, would be the, the Sub-Zero spine rip, that one. That's, that's kind of the signature one that, that everybody thinks of, that's always mentioned. And um, yeah, it's just kind of like the ultimate fatality for everybody. My favorite fatality is ripping someone's heart out. And I think that defines what Mortal Kombat's all about. Probably it would have to be the um, one of the stage fatalities. I think the Collapsing Cliffs one with the detail of struggling on with this spike through your stomach. I think that was really great. When I first played Mortal Kombat in the arcade, uh, I thought like when Scorpion like took off his uh, ninja hood and blew his fire at the victim, 
and to see him like burn up in smoke, uh, I thought that was like the coolest thing um, I ever saw. And it just was like a, a pretty good shock when I first saw that. And um, to this day, it sticks with me. I would have to go with a classic. And I'm gonna say it's Sub-Zero Spine Rip from MK Deadly Alliance. Something about the choreography of the whole thing is a lot more elaborate than the previous spine rips he did. My all-time favorite fatality is probably with Quan Chi in Mortal Kombat 4, where he tears the opponent's leg off and kind of beats him to death with it. Probably my least favorite fatalities are the ones that just receive the least polish so that they don't look as convincing as they should. My least favorite fatality for Mortal Kombat was in MK3 where he just started launching all these bombs out of his chest. The screen faded and you saw the earth and the earth explodes and that's it. That's the fatality. It was one of the quicker ones I'm sure that we did and it was easily my least favorite fatality. Boy, my least favorite one has got to be uh, Scorpion's animality. Of all animals to change into, Scorpion changes into a penguin and lays an exploding egg. My least favorite fatality coincidentally also involves Quan Chi, and it is his next stretch fatality from Deadly Alliance. Yeah, that one probably could have been given to someone else or been left on the drawing board probably. It was kind of done in a rush. He jumps up on the victim, grabs him by the head, and just pulls him in. His neck stretches super long. It looks pretty silly. This is a guy walking around with an exaggerated neck. It's, it makes me laugh. I know it's silly, but I think it's funny. I'm not sure. I think we were getting a little, uh, getting a little low on creativity there. I, that thing totally didn't make sense. It was, it was a funny idea, and we were going to do it, but once we saw it in the game, I personally said, uh, it looks kind of dumb. Um, but uh, we left it in because we were running out of time. You know, sorry about that. So Quan Chi has my favorite and least favorite fatalities in all of the Mortal Kombat series. Deadly killer. Bloody. Mortal. Brutal. Evil. Vicious. Savage Ultimate